In this video, I'm going to set up the buses for this mix. Now, in most mixes that I do, I use four stereo buses that act as submixes for the main mix. They comprise the drums bus, a musical instrument bus that I just call music, a vocal bus that has the lead and background vocals, and an effects bus for all of my master effects. Mixing with these four stereo buses gives me a lot of flexibility, but for now, let's get the buses set up and route our tracks to those buses. I can do this in the track view or the console view, but let's start with the console view. I can get there by views, console view. You can see Alt 2 is the shortcut for that. I use a different way. I just open and close the multi-dock once I get it set up the way I like. So I'm going to get the console view open and then basically fully maximize this. Now, if you have two screens, you might want to put the console view on your second screen. But right now, we've only got this one screen to work with. Because it's in the multi-dock, I can now open and close the console view just using D. So for these videos, this is how I'm going to flip back and forth between the track view and the console view, just hit D. Now that I've got it open, you can see that we have two buses that are set up by default in our project, the master bus and the metronome. Let's add the drum bus. Right click, insert stereo bus, and let's label it right away. So we'll call that drums. Now let's just get a little bit organized. I'm going to close the multi-dock. We can set the order right here in the track view. If I click this area, it exposes all the buses as tracks in the track view. I actually want the drums bus and all of my other submixes to come before the master. So I'm going to reorder this and put it above the master. I'll also put the metronome in here before the master. Now the thing I want to do is hide this metronome. I also don't like that naming, so I'm going to call it click instead of metronome. I like shorter names. It just seems a little more clear. And I want to hide it. I can just right click on here and hide that bus. We don't really need it. We can adjust that or we can bring it back. If you ever want to bring one of these back, you can go under tracks and go into the track manager. Here's a list of all the tracks. You can turn the click track back on here. While we're in the track manager, you'll want this global option, keep the track and the console view states in sync. I'm going to turn that on and click OK. That way, if I hide and show things, it does the same thing in both views. Now that I've got the order set correctly, I want to assign all of these to the drum bus. I'm going to use the inspector for this right now. I'll hit I to open the inspector. You can see the input output assignment is down here at the bottom of every track and every bus. Now, if you don't happen to see that, you can adjust the display right here. Make sure you have the input and output section shown in the inspector. All right, so let's go to the kick drum. On the kick drum, we want it not to go to the main out. But we want to go to the drums sub bus. Same thing for the snare. I'm just going to work my way through all the drums. Then the overhead. Now we could do the same thing in the console view as well. So I'm going to open the console view by clicking D to go to the multi-dock. Now you can already see that some of these are assigned, but now we can go here, assign the overhead to the drums. Maybe this is a little easier to do in the console view. Whichever way you like to work, it does the exact same thing. Now I've got to scroll over a little bit here so we can see what else we've got. Shakers, shakers for now will go to the drums boss as well. All the drums are now assigned to come into the drums bus. The drums bus is then assigned to go to the master. The master is assigned to go to the main out. All right, so we have our drum bus set up correctly. Now let's set up the rest of the buses. I'll right click here, insert another stereo bus. This will be the one that we'll call music. Now I have a convention for the way I do the naming in Sonar X1. In the earlier video, I actually had mixed cases in here, but I actually prefer to use all lowercase in the actual tracks. And then for the buses, I use uppercase characters. Now, when I put in effects buses later, those are mixed case. I just wanted to point out that I think it's a good idea to have a systematic approach to this. While I'm at it, I'm going to add my other two buses. So the next one, insert the stereo bus here. This will be for vocals. I just call it Vox, which is a well-known abbreviation for vocals. can create a little space by dragging this over. And then I'll insert my final stereo bus. And this is for effects. And FX is a very common abbreviation for that. Now, I'll reorder these the way I like to see them. Drums, then the music bus, then the vocal bus, 
and then the effects bus and the master bus last. Go back to the console view, you can see they're all assigned right here and in the correct order. You can just push this over a little bit. Now all of these buses that I've created, you can see they're all automatically routed to the master channel. And that's exactly what we want. The master channel is routed to the main output. I don't actually need to look at this main output very often. Now also this view is a little bit wide for my screen. I'm gonna close the inspector right now. And then under strips, we can go to a narrow strip. So I'll narrow all strips. Now let's go through and assign everything to the correct outputs. We have the drums that we already assigned. And now this is the bass, so we're going to assign that to music. This is the bass fuzz. We'll assign that to music. We've got the guitar clean. We'll also assign that to music. If we had keyboards, we'd be assigning that to music. All these guitars go to the music bus uh, riff. And lots of different guitar parts we have to work with here. Now we come to the background vocals. The background vocals go to Vox. 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 And the lead vocal also goes to Vox. Now a lot of this stuff is muted. I'm just going to find the background vocals and I'm going to turn them all down a little bit so that when we play back they're not blaring too much. Same thing with these. And then we'll unmute everything. We can do that all at once right here. Now we should be able to control the overall mix right here from the subgroups. All right, so this is the overview of our mix, these four stereo buses. So that's a key part of the way I like to set up a mix. Now I'd like to see more of a visual difference between a bus channel and a normal channel. You can see that the faders are blue, which is kind of nice, but really I'd like to get more differentiation. So I'm gonna change the text color here. I can do that by hitting P to open the preferences. And then I'll go into the colors under customization colors. And then here, we'll go into the console view. Down near the bottom here, you can see the console bus name text. This is currently a light blue or cyan color, just like all the other text. So I'll click right here. I'm just going to make it brighter. So we'll choose color. I'll just pick this bright white. And hit apply there. Now you see that didn't actually change quite yet. But there it goes. Now we see that change. Sometimes you need to actually restart Sonar for these UI color changes to take effect. I want to do something similar in the track view. I want to change the color here to get more differentiation between these tracks and these buses. Same thing. Hit P. Go to Colors. Here we want to go to the track view. And then we want to find the track view bus name text right here. You can see it's cyan or this light blue choose white and again hit apply and close if it doesn't change colors in a few seconds here then we would just need to restart to see that change so following a restart you can see my color change took effect it's a very subtle thing it's just a matter of your own preference whether you want to do something like this to customize the colors just to get a little bit better differentiation between the different kinds of tracks so now we have the buses set up for submixes in our project Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.